Let's talk about the sensitive, vulnerable narcissist. So otherwise known as a covert narcissist, but more than a covert narcissist, one that is also more the vulnerable type, the more sensitive type. What are you going to see? What to look for? How to know what's going on? So I'm Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com. Lots of information in the description. So check it out of every video. Hit the thumbs up. What is a vulnerable narcissist? It is a narcissistic person who has a hypersensitivity to rejection, abandonment, negative emotion, to social isolation, and to, and has a large mistrust of others. So they are narcissistic people who have turned it more inward toward, instead of, they're still seeking supply from the outside, but they've turned it more inward toward making you feel sorry for them so that you're giving them the supply they need in order for them to boost their own ego. So they are more likely to appear to need you. They're more likely in relationships to be the type that are actually saying that they love you, that saying that they need you. And in fact, maybe even love bombing you on and off through the whole relationship. Okay, now let me get this straight. Not all covert narcissists act this way. The more, the more vulnerable type will. All right, so if you say, well, my covert never did these things, that's probably because they were less vulnerable in nature than another person. So this is just a way of a vulnerable type of sensitive person who also has narcissism will present in the world and how they'll treat you in relationship. They might be people with a large social circle and lots of friends in different social circles. So many social circles or a large social circle that they don't seem to have any real true deep connections with any people within the group. So they're sort of just part of the group and they're, they had, they play a role within the group. That's another video for another time, but that might be something you see because some people think, well, narcissists don't really have friends. Well, this is how they can look like they have friends and they can still get the attention and the affection that they need from people. And the supply that they need from people within a group of people. Okay. They need a ton of attention and they will take that attention without a whole heck of a lot of giving. So they will be the type to be talking about themselves, needing what they need, what they want. Everything's on their timetable, on their schedule, the things they need in life without a whole lot of consideration. Well, without any consideration really for others around them, there is no accountability as with any narcissist for the things that they do that hurt other people. The difference is with a grandiose narcissist or with a more malignant narcissist, you kind of get to where you don't expect any accountability. You kind of just are like, yeah, that's how they are. They, you know, they're always this, they're always that. With these people that are more vulnerable and also narcissistic with covert narcissists, it is very confusing because they give the impression and the illusion that they have empathy. So you're thinking, why can they care so much about this, this, and this, but they don't care about me? The truth is they don't care about this, this, and this, whatever those other things are. They're just attaching themselves to the issues because it gives them attention to say they care about it, or it feeds back into them like, oh, they're such an amazing person if everyone sees them as amazing. They're using it as a cover to get people to believe they are who they want people to believe they are. But in fact, as you see, when you're in relationship with them, they don't have any accountability for their actions or consideration for you. They worry and have an over the top concern for their own needs, wants, physical health, mental health, emotional health. They worry about themselves a heck of a lot. I have been around a vulnerable narcissist who he was so into like preening to make sure he was, and it wasn't in an arrogant, egotistical way. It was in a, oh, is something wrong here? Oh, is something wrong there? My health is doing this. My this is doing that. My this is, oh, this hurts. Oh, this is bad. And, but it, to the point where it was like everything was was turned toward them and the rest of the world didn't really matter didn't matter what anyone else had going on if they were delaying things for other people it just didn't matter as long as it served the attention going back to them and it's like an over um it's an over attention towards self without having any consideration in the same way for other people sometimes they will shift their social groups in life as they go through life 
by leaving things that don't feed their ego, leaving things that don't serve them getting supply. And it becomes really obvious. They may leave a group of people who have an interest that doesn't highlight how wonderful they are. And then they find another group who thinks they're really funny. And so they hang out with those people and suddenly when the humor has gone and they don't really think they're funny anymore, they leave and find another group. So they're basically looking for a place to fit in and find the attention. Okay, when you're in a relationship with them, or when you have work with them, or when you have close enough contact where there's enough interaction where you start to have conflict, where you start to have a need to tell them things, to critique things, to um, state your own needs, that kind of thing, you're going to see that they are extremely sensitive to any critiquing, anything saying they're at fault, anything that could remotely sound like you're not thinking they're the most amazing thing in the world. And they will react with defensiveness, with criticism, with blaming, with circular conversations, with gaslighting, blame shifting. Did I say that one? They will twist everything around they won't take accountability and it's like a wall goes up and the sensitivity comes out and it becomes out as a, a, a huge rush of defensiveness. They can appear to be introverted or broody or they look sensitive. They look like a sensitive person. They, people mistake, I think Angie's talked about that before, about always being attracted to the quiet, sensitive one that didn't seem to quite fit in. That's what this is. This is the broody, sensitive, vulnerable person who is also narcissistic, who also lacks empathy, lacks consideration for others. Okay, not all people who are broody or introverted are narcissists. No, but when you combine those two traits, it's going to look different than someone who is more vivacious and extroverted and attention seeking in a more obvious way a more overt way. Okay, coverts are hard to spot. So that's why we're talking about it. This is in fact, a form of insecurity. It is an insecure narcissist. It's not a narcissist who's boastful, because they actually know they're amazing. It's an, a narcissist who's boastful, because they don't believe they're amazing. And they're trying to pretend that they're amazing by wearing a mask of amazing, and making everyone believe they're amazing through manipulating everyone. And how do they manipulate? Oftentimes, through playing the victim. They will play the victim. They will use and weaponize being a victim to manipulate situations. They, they have a primary manipulation tactic that is from the perspective and point of view of a victim. This is a more shame-based narcissist. They, they're more shame-based, they're more defensive, and they can more easily be triggered into narcissistic tantrums, narcissistic rages, because they can't take any criticism, critique, or anyone seeing them as anything other than perfect. A more grandiose narcissist and a more overt narcissist will one up you, laugh in your face, say, oh yeah, you think so? They are boastful, they're, they're different. A covert narcissist is going to deflect, pretend it isn't them. And then when you or another person or they perceive the world isn't suddenly falling at their feet, then they may go into either silent rage, like silent treatment, stonewalling, those kinds of things, or go into a full on narcissistic tantrum. They often in life will tell you, okay, they'll claim to be sensitive. They will tell you at some point in the early stages of love bombing in the relationship, how a sensitive person they are. Everyone that says that again, isn't a narcissist, but you have to look for the signs of lack of empathy. You have to look for the other traits that look like toxic behavior that that shows a person can't relate to another person in a healthy way. They aren't attaching in a healthy way. They aren't having conflict in a healthy way. A sensitive, vulnerable narcissist will guilt trip you. They use guilt trips a lot. They fear rejection. They fear ridicule. They feel shame and convert that shame into hiding it behind their ego. So it comes out as being a victim and they fear being inferior to others. So those are just a few of the traits that you might look for. If you're with someone, then you think something's up. I can't have a healthy 
conversation with this person unless it is positive and glowing toward them. I can't get, I can't be heard in this relationship because when I try and state my needs, this person becomes defensive and hostile. I never feel like I'm important. I'm invisible. They're the only thing that's important in this relationship. Everything in life is to serve this person. When you start feeling things like that and you've got these traits going on, you may be dealing with a sensitive, vulnerable narcissist, otherwise known as a covert narcissist or a certain type of covert narcissist. So there's that for today. I will see you guys next time. Remember to hit the thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you want any topics talked about. There's also head over to the community page where there is a nice big question about what do you need. So let me know what you need in video form and I will get it out there for you as best I can. Again, my name is Lisa Colucci and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.